That is all, then let us continue with our call to worship. A time set apart. A time to come together. A space filled with silence. A space, A space filled with song. Hearts seeking solace. Hearts, Hearts overflowing with joy. joy. This is the day the Lord had made. Yeah. Let us worship God. Please rise for this morning's opening hymn. What a day that will be.
door with me in the prayer of confession. Be gracious to us today, our Lord, for we are in need of your mercy. We are often quick to be and slow to pray. We are tempted to let go of faith when we need you to hang on. We are discouraged by harm, but we need to be encouraged by your spirit. Oh God, we are thankful for the strength you give us to trust in you all the days of our lives. Please take a moment for your own side of confession. This is your assurance of pardon. God's life-giving word and spirit enable us to live in a new obedience, opening new possibilities of life in this world. Thanks be to God for this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Still Moses sees salvation work, salvation work, see salvation work, 
Stand still, Moses, see salvation work, for I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. And take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy ground. these gifts that lives are changed by what we have given this day. Amen. Young adults, please come forward. have a jack-o'-lantern here as you all can see and uh, I brought this idea from the newsletter who published us and it's about a prayer for pumpkin people and I'll read the introduction to it so you all know why I'm doing this today after Liz Curtis Hogg wrote the popular children's book the pumpkin patch the pumpkin I didn't wear my glasses sorry <laughs> the pumpkin patch parable People began using the analogies to say a prayer while carving the Halloween pumpkins. The pumpkin prayer, a Christian alternative to Halloween traditions, reminds people of all ages when God has, has done for us. Use it this fall when your family makes jack o' lanterns. So, I need, who wants to volunteer first here? Okay, Michael, come up. The first prayer, because there's a prayer for everything you do when you uh, carve a pumpkin. Take the top off of the pumpkin and you can just lay it in the sky right now. And the prayer for this, what? Cutting off the top of the pumpkin, pray. Lord, open my mind so I can learn new things about you. Thank you. He's about to right now. And the second prayer is, well, removing the seeds, pray. So who wants to remove the seeds? I took them and put them in a bag. So I can say, come on, somebody come in here, just pull them out of the bag. <laughs> that was a hard job this morning, believe me. That's a job, thank you. Okay, and the next part of carving the pumpkin is 
Well, making eyes pray. Okay, who wants to take the eyes out? I sort of poked them out and you just pull them out. Okay, and the prayer for that is open my eyes to see the beautiful the beauty you've made in the world around us. And while you do the nose, who wants to do the nose? Okay, really don't come up. I need you to probably be the last one. While you're doing the, taking out the nose, pray, I'm sorry for the times I've turned up my nose to your many gifts. Okay, now we need somebody to take out the mouth here. Okay, who, who wants to do the mouth? Okay, then you come up. Okay. <laughs> While removing the mouth, pray, let everything I say please you. Okay, now, the next one I have is light. Candace, so I want Michael to do that because he's always used to doing these and he knows how to run the thing. I'm going to put the candy in here. If you can reach down in there with your thing and light that. While lighting the candle, pray. Lord, help me show your light to others through the things that I do. Okay. And after carving your pumpkin, Display them on ex display them on examples of how God's love transforms us into new creations. Okay, thank you, children, for helping me out there. I appreciate that. And we'll just lift the pumpkin so everybody can see. Okay, and I actually have a treat for you guys today. Can't be Halloween without a trick or treat. <laughs> And thank you all for coming up and uh, take all the messages that we had today and, and live your life through that and show others uh, what a beautiful person that you are. You probably have two if you want to take another one. God, we come to you this day with joy in our hearts, ready to worship and praise you. We worship and praise you because of your goodness, because of your grace, because of your mer the mercy that you have shown each and every one of us. We are so thankful this day that we serve you, the one true God, the only God. So as we worship you this day, we sing praise you. We read your word. We pray for those who need a touch from you. Heavenly Father, we lift those people to you at this time. We think of Sarah, who hurt her back, and she takes care of a lot of animals, and so we pray that She's feeling better soon so that she can take care of those animals that have been entrusted to her. <coughs> we also think of Joni this day, and we pray that the medicine will work and, and that she will get feeling better and that the pain will subside. We also think of Paul this day as he begins the grieving process, as well as the entire family. Be with them, surround them with your love, Father. We're also grateful that John's surgery went well and we pray for continued healing there. We're also grateful that, that Cindy, uh, her lungs are clear, all is well, and, and we know that that's your healing power and we thank you for that. We're also glad that Heather's here today and that uh, her hand is doing well and we just ask that you surround her with your love and your healing power. We also lift Lincoln to you this day. We pray for a healing touch from you. 
we're also grateful that Jim's doing well, Ike's doing well. Um, we pray for Frank this day that he gets feeling better soon. We lift Mason and his entire family to you this day. We also think of more, the wars that are going on and we think of your chosen people and the suffering they are dealing with. Heavenly Father, <coughs> protect your people this day. Um, provide for them in, in their time of need. We also lift Dennis and Sammy to you as they head south and we just ask that you would watch over them. Also, Mark and Shirley, and we ask for traveling mercies for them as well. We also lift Ray to you, and Mary Ellen to you, and we lift Jen to you, who's having a birthday this week, and, and I know she gets excited about her birthdays because she's never been sure how many that she's going to have, and so we're grateful for another birthday for Jen, and, and we praise you for each year that each of us have. Father, when we come to this place remembering all you've done for us, we think of the greatest sacrifice ever made. The sacrifice that Jesus made for his enemies, us. And we're grateful for that sacrifice. And as we remember all that he did for us, we remember the prayer he said to you. Our Father, Lord of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our hymn of preparation. Speak, Lord, in the stillness. If you are able, please stand. entitled Moses and the Burning Bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, 
And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, Jesus called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. This is God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Now, I'm sure you've heard the saying, and I even said it myself as a child, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Boy, that couldn't be further from the truth, could it? I mean, it just, it, it is such bad thinking because words are powerful. Words really can hurt us. I think of words like, I don't love you anymore. Or maybe words like, your tumor is malignant. Or we've tried everything and we just can't do anything to help you. Sorry, we did everything that we could do. Or words like, your job has been eliminated. Words really do mean a lot, don't they? I mean, especially words that are spoken by God. Those words matter the most. Those words are of the most importance. Those are the greatest words. Those words are powerful. I mean, it was words that spoke everything that we see into existence, if you look around, just with his words. Now today, as we look at scripture, we see Moses and I assume he was having a perfectly lovely day minding his own business when all of a sudden he looks in the distance and he sees this bush on fire. But it's strange because the bush is not consumed. It is not even singed. It's not burning up. So he goes and he takes a closer look at it to see what's going on. And all of a sudden the bush is speaking or words come from the bush. Moses Moses, can you imagine? Can you 
imagine what that would be like to be standing there at this odd site and having God's voice call out to you? To hear that sound. And the words that he heard, they it was something much more than just somebody calling out your name. It was the nature of God. It was the very character of God that he was about to meet. You see, from birth, God had chosen Moses for a special task, and that task was to free the Israelites and to lead them to the promised land. And when Moses was at that burning bush that day, his life was forever changed. <coughs> different because of the words spoken that day. Forever. And so I want to look at the words spoken to Moses by God that day. And as we look at verses 13 and 14, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God said to Moses, I am who I am. God let Moses know who he was. The name I am who I am proclaims that God is self-existent, self-sufficient, eternal, sovereign, one of a kind. How can the indescribable be described? Well, God said, that I am who I am. But the Lord is not defined by anything other than himself. That's his description. I am who I am. I'm what I am. It's not determined by anything or anyone else but himself. The self-existent one. Now this is a God that his promises are sure. This is a God that will reveal himself to each and every one of us with his saving words. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The only one that existed forever and for all time. This God, the I am, is the final authority. God was saying to Moses, I am the T-H-E God, not a God, but the only God. He was in the presence of the one who controls all that we see. He is the one and only God, the one and only true God. He said, I am who I am. And understand that God spoke to Moses, the words that he spoke to him. It's the same God that speaks to us today. It's the same God. Let's look at verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. <clears throat> the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. God was saying to Moses, I have seen. I've seen what's happening. God knows, wanted Moses to know that he knew what was taking place, that he was paying attention. And here is the good news for each of us this day. God knows our suffering as well. Our God is not far away and distant. He's right here with us. We're in the presence of God this day. He's not distant. He's not removed or unaware of our problems. He is right here with us. 
no matter what you are going through today, God is saying, I know, I see. As we look at <coughs> verse 7 once again, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. God say, I've heard. I've heard your prayers. I've heard your cries. God hears our prayers and our cries as well. When God says, I have heard, what he is really saying is, I, I understand. I understand your heartache. I understand your pain. I understand your difficulties. I understand your struggles. And here's the good thing. God always answers our prayers. Our God is a God who answers prayers. Maybe not the way we wanted them to be answered. Maybe not in the timeline that we thought he should act. But God will answer our prayers in his time in the way he deems best. And understand, God's way is always better than our ways. Always. Have you ever prayed to God and then something better happened? Something greater? Something more marvelous? I, I prayed to God one time. I said, use me. Boy, let me tell you. <laughs> if you pray that to God, you better really mean it because he will absolutely use you far greater than anything I ever expected or asked for. God always answers our prayers. And then in verse 8, So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land <coughs> into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. God said that day, I have come. God doesn't just come to share in our pain. He comes to give us a brand new life. He comes to give us hope. When God sent Jesus into the world, Jesus came to bring healing, to bring hope, to bring a new life, a new future for each and every one of us. It's available to anyone. It's available to everyone those who accept Jesus as their Savior. And in verses 11 and 12, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. God saying, I will be with you. God is involved in each and every one of our lives, intimately involved. And what God desires to happen will happen. We need to trust God because he's going to do what he says he will do. You need to trust God that he will be with you. You need to trust God that he will never abandon you. Remember, God's presence is with us. God's power is within us. God's provision has been given to us. God said to Moses, and God is saying to us this day, I am who I am. I have seen, I have heard, I have come, and I will be with you. How many of you have heard Edward Kimball? Anyone here? How about Henrietta Mears? No? You've never heard of those people at all? Well, Edward Kimball was a shoe salesman. And he was a committed Christian. And one day the Lord spoke to him and said, you need to minister to the people that you work with. And so he spread the message the Good News Gospel, to his co-worker. His co-worker's name was D.L. Moody. 
Why Moody? In fact, Moody became one of the greatest evangelists of his time. And then we look to Henrietta Mears. She felt the call to start a Sunday school class, and the first Sunday there were 400 people. Can you imagine? It was in 1928 in Hollywood, California, at the First Presbyterian Church. 400 people showed up that first day, and it grew to 4,000 in her Sunday school class. Good luck learning all those names, right? <laughs> But it just so happened that out of the 4,000 people that attended her Sunday school class, 400 of them became full-time ministers, and one was known as Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. That is the power of one. One person can make a difference. With God, all things are possible. Moses led God's people out of bondage. <clears throat> the question is, what can you do? What is your burning bush, burning bush saying to you? And what I'm asking you is this. The moment that God came into your life, he reveals his will for our lives. He reveals what he's calling you to do. I'm talking about that moment that you got fired from the board. You see, we need to be like that burning bush. We need to be consumed by the fire of God. Burning for God, not burn up and not burn out. Are you on fire for the Lord like Moses was? Maybe like Henrietta was? Maybe like Edward was. Are you on fire for the Lord? You see, Moses had every excuse in the book why he could not do what God was asking him to do. And this is Diane's translation, by the way. Said, I'm not worthy. I don't know what to say. I don't talk good. In fact, he stuttered. Said to God, send someone else. I mean, you know my past. I've told you the past. Pharaoh's not going to listen to someone like me. Moses was saying, Lord, you have the wrong guy because I'm nobody. God, you know what I've done. God, you just need to get someone else. And the fact is this, Moses was not qualified, and Moses was not worthy. And I think that's exactly why God chose him. So there'd be no mistake that when God's power moved through him, that it was God, not Moses. God was leading his people. God was providing for his people. It was God that sent Moses and worked through Moses. So I guess the questions I have today, what are your excuses? You might be saying, and I had this said to me, I'm too old. Well, guess what? Moses was 80 when he was chosen to lead his people. Maybe you'll be saying, I'm not a good speaker. Well, Moses had a stuttering problem. Maybe you're thinking, well, I'm not worthy. Moses was a murderer. Maybe you're thinking, I'm not, and you can fill in the blank, folks, whatever you want to put in there. But my point is this. Moses had to rely on the power of God and not his own power. And we need to do the same. No matter what it is, remember these facts. God makes the ordinary become extraordinary. He makes the usual and the mundane become unusual. After encountering the burning bush, our direction in life will change. Our attitude toward God will change. Our purpose for living will change. Our desire to now serve God, the God of the universe, the great I am. 
Are you on fire for the Lord? Do you know what he's asking you to do? The question is this day, what is your burning bush? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, when you call us your children, you don't call us to sin. You call us to action. Each of us have a ministry. Each of us have a bit different ministry. We're all called to work for the kingdom. What is it you're asking of each person here this day? Reveal that to them. Show them that they can make the di a difference. Just one person can make a great difference. We praise you this day great sacrifice made that we would have this opportunity to serve you. We are so grateful. We worship and praise you this day in the name of your suffering servant, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn this day, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. If you are able to stand. Say, Amen. Amen.